And welcome back to Politics Unplugged. This week, the Phoenix City Council approved plans for what will be the tallest building in the city and a tax break for the developer on that project. Here to talk about what that means for the city moving forward is Axios reporter, reporter Jessica Bame and Arizona Agendas. Hank Stevenson, thank you both for being here. Before we start getting into all those the city issues, I do want to uh, talk a little bit about uh, Stephen Richer uh, and get your take on, you know, it looks like he's going to run for re-election, hasn't formally announced. Uh, for recorder, can Richard, given the fact that he's been such a target from the right for defending the elections, can he win a primary, a Republican primary, if, next year? Has he not formally announced? He told you he was running. He put up his uh, help me, Obi-Wan, you're my only hope mm -hmm. tweet as a fundraiser. He hasn't filed the paperwork. <laughs> okay, okay. okay. <laughs> uh, can he win in a primary? I don't know. We've seen some of the uh, elections supporting county officials mm. uh, fare relatively well in their, you know, fare well enough in their primary races and challenges that have been launched against them. Uh, but this is today's GOP. It will probably come down to how many of the election denying weirdos run against him in a five way race. Yeah, he probably wins in a one to one against a strong election denier with, you know, some backing, some money. That's a real hard race. All right. And your thoughts on this? Uh, obviously, you probably have a slightly more nuanced, different take. Maybe not. <laughs> I don't know about that. I think I think Hank's probably spot on, but I I do think that we also have a year plus till a primary, and Lord knows what will happen between mm -hmm. then and now. And mm -hmm. so I think uh, in a lot of ways it's a little too early to predict. Okay, and also too, we uh, you know just spoke with uh, T.J. Show. He's in leadership in the Senate there. I've got to think that when the when the, the legislature comes back into session again after taking their per diem for not doing anything for the past month, that th that, that given the response from Republicans to the governor's executive orders that there's going to be some sort of reaction to that legislatively. What are, what are your, what's your take? It'll get vetoed. It'll likely get vetoed, <laughs> I mean, but still. Yeah, I think, you know, they're coming back. They're probably going to have a couple of bills ready to make a statement about what they don't like the governor, that, that the governor has been doing. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, they're going to be bills that will have to go to the governor's office. So it's been kind of nice this year. You get to tune out a good portion of what happens at the Capitol because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. We know these things are going to get vetoed. So as the good senator said, a lot of this is legislative theater. Yeah, yeah. It, it, and, and certainly a lot of that is. Um, so I do want to move on. I do want to talk about the, uh, the city some of those issues. You've done a lot of reporting on homelessness in Phoenix, and I do want to talk to you a little bit about the, the plan that, that the city moved forward on uh, to build a new homeless camp uh, downtown. It seemed like for me from some of the reporting I've read that is that the council was really kind of not really up to date on the plan itself before they voted on it, but here we are. Yeah, that's right. And, you know, if the council didn't know, I, I imagine the public, including yeah. myself and you and, yeah. and any other taxpayer, didn't know either. Um, a, about 24 hours before the vote, there were council members saying that they were unaware um, until stories came out. And basically what's happened is the city decided, despite not knowing uh, some of the details, to vote on a, and to purchase a piece of property, some state land, uh, basically adjacent to the zone homeless encampment that the court has ordered them to clear. Um, and they're going to turn that into like a sanctioned campground. So there'll be 12 foot by 12 foot squares drawn on uh, the ground. And that's where folks can set up their their camps. Mm -hmm. um, and I do think I, I really want to point this out. I think something that's been missed that's really important to note is that last year uh, the city received state funding to open an indoor homeless shelter at 22nd Avenue and Lower Buckeye Road. It was supposed to be open this month. Wow. And it's not. And unfortunately, last week they just discovered methane gas there. So they have to start the whole process over. So late in the process? I have so many unanswered questions, Dennis, but that being the biggest, um, in addition to how much taxpayer money has already been spent on this, and you know, not to lose sight of the bigger picture, it's going to be 115 degrees this weekend. We're in an excessive heat warning. Um, people die outside in the summer. Okay, and, and let me ask you, Hank, I mean, always uh, kind of related to Jason at least, when I mean, you talk about homelessness is housing. Um, any chance this year before they sign, sign any die that the legislature could get back in, and do something on housing? As, as you've been reporting and following, it failed spectacularly this, this past session. A lot of the bills trying to deal with that issue. Any hope of that? 
I think that ship has sailed. Mm -hmm. I think there was a brief moment, you know, during the uh, the very end of the legislative session where it seemed like something was going to happen, and when that fell apart, and uh, Senator Steve Kaiser, who was championing all that stuff, called it quits and just left the legislature. I think you know that that was the end of the discussion on that for this year. I could be wrong, but I doubt it. All right, and I also want to ask you to. Another big piece on the council agenda this past week is they approved a building. It's going to be a mixture of uh, hotel, condos, uh, maybe some retail there. Uh, 50 stories. It's going to be the tallest building in the state, yet they gave out another tax break called, called a giblet, I the government lease ex excise tax. And, and tell us a little bit about that. Why do these buildings downtown, if it's so hip, it's so happening down there, there's so much demand down there, why does the city need to incentivize developers down there to get these buildings up? There's a few lawyers asking that question today. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, so basically the, this development um, received this tax break that uh, allows them to basically forego property tax for, for a period of time. And in exchange for that, what this developer has done is that there will be 300 units of, I think they're calling it co-housing or shared housing for um, people that they call it like the workforce category, people who make 80 to 120 percent of the area median income. And basically, you'll have like a private bedroom and bathroom, but share your communal living space. Um, and it will be priced at a level that folks in that, that range can afford. So the city is looking at this as like adding affordable housing. I think there's probably some legitimate questions when we know that we have hundreds of at least 100,000 units of uh, housing that we still need to build, like is 300 units mm -hmm. enough to, to give this giant tax break. I will say on the other side, there, there's legitimate arguments about cost labor production that makes these types of projects really hard to pencil out. And that's what the developer will tell you. All right, and uh, final question, I only got about 10 seconds here. We got a, a, a new uh, lawmakers gonna be coming back to the Senate. They're gonna be appointed by the, by the county. It looks like it's gonna be a familiar face. Looks like, uh, to be determined, uh, but the smart money is on Shauna Bullock, uh, former lawmaker. To replace Steve Kaiser. Yes, to replace Steve Kaiser. Um, that is a super competitive district. Shauna Bullock is one of the hardest charging uh, far right lawmakers of recent years. She is going to have a really difficult time holding that seat, I think, and Democrats are really excited about that prospect. All right, I have to end it right there. Jessica, with Axios, thank you very much, and Hank, with the Arizona agenda and now the new Tucson agenda. I want to thank Tucson you very agenda. much for being here and that's all the time we have. Be sure to join us next week for more Politics Unplugged.